honor to be with you. Um, thanks for the compliment on the boots. Appreciate that. <laughs> love from the outset. You guys are lovable. Um, so every day I get to use neuroscience to design behavior change and well-being. And so today we're going to play with our brains a little bit. There's um, sort of performance gears in our brains that we'll talk about, spe specifically two gears I want to point out today. And then basically I'll relate that to the clean design of the A8. And then we'll finish on a on-the-go practice that you can do anytime, anywhere um, for yourself to shift from one part of your brain into that performance gear once we cover it. All right? So the first thing I want to share is that our brains are extremely stingy, meaning that we want to conserve energy at all costs. We don't want to waste any time or energy thinking of things unnecessarily. So the way our brain accomplishes that is it puts most of our behaviors, approximately 95% of our behaviors, on autopilot every day. So we don't have to think. We don't have to waste any time thinking, remembering how to tie a shoe or order a pizza or anything like that. But, and we're going to call this the, the fast, mindless brain, okay, just for a shortcut. But this fast, mindless brain does shortcut a lot, and so it makes mistakes. It is biased. It is prejudiced. It, it makes assumptions. It jumps to conclusions, and it gets things wrong sometimes. So there's a second gear, which is our performance gear, that we're going to call that the slow brain, the, the slow mindful brain. And basically, this part of our brain is in charge of things like decision making, problem solving, uh, relaxation, mindfulness, um, being able to uh, have willpower, those kinds of things. And more importantly for everyone here, it is the part of our brain that allows us to create new ideas and new things and innovate and write articles and have opinions and stuff like that. So when we create something new, we're using this performance gear of the slow, mindful brain. And if we don't spend enough time in that gear, what happens is that we accumulate a lot of stress. And what's also happening in our larger world is that we have a ton of technology that has come at us the last several years. Would you agree? And what that's doing is it's disrupting our focused attention networks. And it turns out that one of our four main channels of well-being in our brain is focused attention. And so as that gets shattered and disrupted, we start to fall apart in that way. And if you ever walked into a room and forgot why you're there, this is the gear you're in, right? It's that, it's that kind of disrupted state. So I'm, I'm at Stanford, and we work on a lot of sort of persuasive technologies, but also calming technologies um, in our field. And what I'm seeing, if you look at the state of technology today, is that we've kind of come out of this first generation of bells and whistles and pings and, and distractions, right? That's the kind of layer that we're in right now. The next generation, the emerging technologies, like the A8, is this new class of well-being, supportive, brain-friendly type technologies with the brain in mind, with the human experience in mind. And the reason why that's important is two things. One is that technology hasn't been around a long time, but our brains have. And so our brains haven't evolved yet a new area that says, oh, that's a technology. So what the brain does instead is it takes human qualities and attributes it to technology because they both are animate. They both act like people. So it's kind of same, same. This is a concept called anthropomorphization. And so we can't distinguish a technology, how it's treating us versus a person. And if you ever got angry at the early stages of Siri, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the other thing that is important that our brains do is that it groups sensory and emotional experiences. So for example, if I gave you a hot cup of coffee and I had you talk to somebody here, and then I asked you, how is that person? How do you experience them? You would say, they're warm. They have a warm personality, right? Same, same. If I gave you a uh, glass of ice water and had you talk to the same person and I asked you about them, you would describe them as being a little aloof or cold, not as warm, okay? So your brain can't distinguish. These are the shortcuts that we take. And the reason why that's important is that, you know, we have only a finite amount of slow brain energy every day. So when you wake up in the morning, you have this performance gear, this slow brain, and you have a finite amount, and then basically you burn that down through the course of your day by making decisions and solving problems and choosing what you want for lunch and things like that, right? This is why Steve Jobs wore the same thing every day so that he didn't burn any brain energy whatsoever on what to wear every day. Um, 
Now I need to talk about the A8. Again, as I said, there's this whole new class of technologies, A8 being in the car category, that are really focused on well-being. And so we can consider it designed as a well-being platform. And it does this in two ways. Number one is it focuses on taking away unnecessary thinking. You know, it, it preserves your slow, mindful brain gear instead of having to burn through that and, and push you more in the fast brain direction. So that's going to automatically reduce stress. The second thing it does, though, is actually passively curates a mind-body experience. And it does this a couple different ways. Again, using the anthropomorphization, it treats you like a kind person would treat you. You know, it greets you with ritual, you know, with lighting that is warmed up as you come into the car. It greets you with sounds that are pleasant. It, greets, it, it cleans the air for you. And, you know, we, we tend to, when we're stressed, breathe very shallowly. And we don't, we don't take in enough oxygen. And so having the air clean is a very significant passive way to shift somebody in their well-being state without maybe even them knowing it, you know? So sparing our brain resources, and then it's also kind of creating this sanctuary, if you will, from the outside chaos of the world. So now let's go to you. Let's, let's give you something to, to, to go that you can always do for yourself at any time to shift into that performance gear within your brain, in the slow, mindful brain. I'm going to describe um, three, three practices, but I'm going to first point out that there's the part of you that's listening and watching me, listening to and watching me, and then there's the part of you that's watching you listen to me, All right? So see what you did there? So what you did just there is you shifted into your executive control center which is a metacognitive state. You actually change blood flow from one area of your brain to another to understand what I just said. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a three breath practice that will do that anytime, anywhere, whoever you're with, you can do it privately, silently, in front of them, and they won't know what you're doing, okay? But it, again, it, it elicits that control over your thoughts, your emotions, your experience, and it puts you in the driver's seat of your own experience instead of the other way around, okay? So three breath practices. Don't do them yet. I'm going to describe them first, then we'll do them together as a group, okay? All right, so number one, the first breath. You're going to stop and say thank you to yourself. Now, before you think this is California corny, <laughs> this is actually neuroanatomy. Um, again, another well-being circuit in your brain is generosity. So if you start with generosity to yourself for just taking a pause and wanting to shift out of your crazy you know, frenetic mind, then it will, it will start to create blood flow to that area of your brain. The second breath you're going to take is going to be uh, to, it's a cleansing breath. So these are done in martial arts, yoga, those kinds of things. Just a big breath and then removing anything that's kind of weighing on you, stressing you out, distracting you, things you need to clear, maybe too much cognitive, you're too much in your head. Then the third breath, is going to be drawing in something positive. So you're actually shifting again. You're intentionally taking in new positive things. So, so for some people, that might be their dog, a thought of their dog. They might love their dog. Some people, it might be a loved one. Some people, it might be an intention or a goal or a career that you want or some, something that you want to, uh, to build or make. Um, just something that makes you feel positive in any way, and that's very personal to you. And the reason why there's only three breaths is that our mind has this kind of portability factor. We, we're, our brains are really good at threes, but if you add four, we tend to forget. So I call this kind of a minimally viable practice to take on the go. You, you won't forget it. You'll always remember it. And in fact, if you don't get a full shift after one set, feel free to rinse and repeat, you know, until you're fully where you want to be. All right. So you guys ready to play along? All right. Let's do it. Lots of smiles. Thank you guys. Super friendly. All right. So um, first breath, remember, is appreciating yourself. Just take a deep breath and say thank you for taking this moment to yourself. You can even say your own name. It works. Second breath, we're going to breathe. Take a cleansing breath. Breathe in. Release anything you don't want. And again, if you're alone, you can do that really like dramatically. Um, but if you're in front of somebody, just slow nasal breathing is fine. And then the third one is take something positive. So think about something that you think is really positive for you. Focus on it. Take it in and then send it out to someone else. Send positive out. Again, you're giving a second dose to that generosity that you have inside of your head that, again, 
one of your four main well-being channels.